Hey everybody and welcome to our final day of this week's live stream. It's been so much fun to be here with you, to hear from you. When you join me today, please do say hello. Let me know where you're listening from. Uh, we are broadcasting live an overwhelmed solution for moms for this live stream and it's been really fun to connect with some of you on the phone already. The live stream isn't even over yet. Um, stay tuned today because uh, and stay to the end because I'm going to, of course, do a recap for you of the the very fundamental shifts that we make with our clients in awakened motherhood from start, which is survival mode to completion, which is that what happens on the other side of transforming your mental, emotional health and well-being is really being present in your body, really enjoying life, really having fun with your kids and, and knowing how to turn the dials and how to stay there. So um, I'm, I'm excited to dive in and then gonna, going to um, open the door and offer you a way to connect with me um, in even a deeper way at the end of this live stream. So please do stay tuned to the end. So first, let's dive in with where we began in turning chaos to calm. This could be chaos in your home, in your body, in your emotions, in your brain, overthinking. Um, yeah, stuck, just stuck. The journey to calm from feeling chaotic, overwhelmed, overthinking, exhausted. Um, sometimes people feel angry a lot, a lot more than they want to. The journey begins at first taking a step back to look at how you're thinking and how you're viewing your problem. So in this case, the problem is overwhelm. There could be a lot of different ways we define that and things we attach to it. But overwhelm essentially is the experience of feeling tapped out, stuck, frustrated, and unable to change that. So it's stress, it's everyday stress, and not knowing how to shift that. And then we started with what does that mean? Take a look at the problem. What frame are you looking at the problem through? What frame are you looking at your life through? Is it the frame that sounds like if these things would change, I would be okay? So I'm putting my power and my okayness and my fate, my destiny on the circumstances and conditions of my life. Example the way my husband sees me, the way my husband talks to me, the way my children respond to me, the way they tune me out. I'm placing my happiness, my success, my joy on those things that are outside of me that I cannot control. Again, repeat, those are things you cannot control, the things outside of you, how others speak to you, what they think of you, um, on and on, conditions of your life. There are certain ones that we think we can control, like how much support we bring in, what house we live in, what city we live in, where, whether we're near family or not. So yeah, there's some pieces you can turn, but what I found in, in so many years of examining and solving this problem for people is that when the brain is stuck in the view of if these things would change, then I'd be okay. People generally feel very powerless to create what they want in their lives. It is a disempowering view. There's no energy in it. It's tired, it's old, it's outdated programming, and it is not gonna create joy for you in motherhood right now. It just is not. It might create a little relief here and there, a Band-Aid solution, but it will not resolve the cause of overwhelm. That was day one, go back and watch if you have not, I'm sorry, day two, first shift. Go back and watch if you haven't watched that one yet. Then on the next day, what we talked about as that second shift is another place people get stuck in that we have to get out of if we're gonna truly open to joy, which is that place of resistance or denial. So the second shift is moving from, I don't like this, I don't want it to be this way, I can't do this, but still again, connected or hooked into the problem energy, really suffering from the problem, suffering from the way people um, don't listen to you, don't see you, don't hear you, the way that, um, that you feel no matter how hard you try, that you're never finished, it's never done. So denial 
often manifests as distracting yourself, numbing out. So scrolling, drinking, smoking, whatever your pleasure is, um, disconnecting, withdrawing. So opting to isolate, you know, they might be better off without me. I hear people say, or sometimes people will say, you know, I'm not sure, like, what's the point? What's even the point? None of this is fun. Generally, I speak to at least two to three people a week, women who are going on 10 years or plus of working without rest, without stopping to anticipate people's needs take care of everybody else, make sure everyone else is happy and okay. And the thanks they get for that is rude behavior, disrespect, um, kids not valuing them, moms, kids not valuing their moms, um, back talk, ignoring even, kids start isolating, kids have anxiety. Oh, it's heavy. I could just feel it even now talking about it. It's a very heavy patterning that happens for people. So um, the second shift is, is you have to break that um, living in resistance to what actually is, meaning you got to be brave enough to point to this doesn't feel right, and now we're at the next shift. When I decide to go like, yeah, this isn't right. This isn't how it's supposed to be. This isn't working. Oftentimes, by the time people reach out to me for a clarity call, they've already had a conversation with their partner contemplating separation or divorce. That they're, they're already Because the brain goes you can't change this. You've tried and it hasn't worked, so you better just leave and split up the family. And if you've been through that, if you've gone that route, you know how painful it is. You know how difficult that process is of being without your children half the time, of not knowing what's going on when you're not there, of not being able to have the influence you have over them when they live under your roof. And so it's not a great option. It's not one that you, people usually run toward. What's true, though, is that if you continue to deny there is a problem, you cannot move on to the next step. So that third shift we talked about that we really dove into yesterday is acceptance of what is. So in terms of overwhelm and the shift that that causes in your life, the, the crap that it brings with it, there are often health issues that are connected to the stress, whether that's headaches or even just tension in your jaw, whatever, where, wherever your shoulders. Um, there's, there's resentment. Resentment causes a lot of toxicity. Often we'll see lower back pain with that. Um, anger, frustration, isolating, disconnecting. And then the whole inner talk, the flood of overthinking, the flood of, um, of what's wrong with you. I, I can't. I'm, it's not enough no matter what I do. So, so that's kind of the constellation of, of overwhelming motherhood. And we first need to be willing to, again, just sit back and be real with ourselves, give ourselves enough credit to notice that what we're doing is not working, that what we're wanting is not what we have now, that you have a vision or had a vision of what you wanted motherhood to be like, and it's not that, but somehow you've gone far past that in a different direction of it feels um, like, I just spoke to someone today who, who named it as miserable. It feels miserable every day. Every day there's misery. There's n no enjoyment. There's, there's just feeling really stuck. And so acceptance sounds like and I went over this yesterday, watch the live. If you haven't watched that, watch the replay of that, of that live stream. This sucks. This stinks. I don't want it to be like this anymore. This is not what I want. So there's a little bit of resistance there, but can you feel the energy rising of like, just this is not okay. So often ex acceptance opens the door to this is not okay. I'm just not going to go along with this anymore from myself from you, from the, and instead of then trying to change the other person, go like, well, what can I do for me? So acceptance is, I'm going to see and recognize that I don't have within me the know-how to change this, but I recognize that this is not something I want, and this is a real problem affecting me in a real physical, emotional, mental way, affecting all of my relationships, affecting my children and their future and what, what they see as normal or okay, 
uh, in a relationship. What they see as uh, okay to speak to women like, to talk to women as. You know, if you have, especially if you have young boys and they're like, you know, blowing you off. Like, really, just slow down and observe that. And go, how do I really feel about this? So when I take a break on beating myself up about what's not working, when you step back and go, what if I didn't make it wrong? If this just is not what I want and I didn't make it wrong, now we're really getting into just being with. We're not going to do about it yet. We're not going to try to change it yet. We're not going to analyze it yet. We're just going to be with the energy of, what is it like to live in this problem? I'm going to notice what else is impacting. I'm going to notice what areas of my life is creating a mess. Maybe physically in your home, it's creating a mess or clutter. It's everywhere, right? It's chaos. So you want to slow down to really notice that, really observe that. Thanks for joining you guys. I see people coming on. Really notice what that is doing to you and what it's like to live in it and stay in it. And then we're to the final shift today. And this is the fourth shift. By the time you're here, and if you've been tracking with each of these shifts and you're thinking, yeah, I get it. Cognitively, I get it. And I, I've done these things and I've tried these things or I'm trying them now and I'm seeing a little progress or um, you're someone who all along has, a lot of my clients are very hard workers. <laughs> you're a hard worker. You really try, you really want the best. You, you really know that if you just try harder, that you can make things better, that you can make things happen. And so on that idea, you have read all the books and listened to the podcasts and been to therapy and processed through things. And maybe you've done EMDR or other trauma work. Maybe you have been to couples therapy um, you started meditating, you have done journal work, you've done like a lot of great, cool, awesome things, or you've worked on your physical health, your nutrition. These are all beautiful things to practice and work on. And, and if you've done them from an energy of, if I just do more, if I just push harder, I know that I'm going to break through, I'm going to figure this out and things are going to get better. There's a little bit there I have to call out of that poly positive or whatever we want to call it in the south in the south we call that Susie spiritual I've prayed about it I'm from I'm from the I'm from the deep south you guys from the bible belt and uh we used to have a name for people who would what we now call spiritual bypass which is I'm um, doing the things I'm doing all the things um and Susie spiritual <laughs> I think I haven't thought of Susie Spiritual in decades, but anyway, Susie Spiritual is part of an identity of someone who, um, who journals, who prays, who goes to church, who does the things, but like is not really walking the walk. So you may, you know, a, a lot of my clients are so smart and sensitive and um, really successful and have done a lot of great things to try to solve the problem of overwhelm or their relationships, but They've been left with frustration. They've been left feeling like, what am I supposed to do with all these pieces? Um, you know, I worked here on this, here on that, here on that, but like nothing is really resolving the root cause of overwhelm, whatever that is. And uh, I can see, and I know it's not working because in the day to day, I still feel frustrated. People talk to me like crap. Nobody does what I ask. I feel like the Lone Ranger in my house. I'm doing everything everyone expects backs of me to do because I built it that way I designed it that way and now it sucks and I don't like it and I want to change it and I don't know how right so you're here because what you have tried has not given you the result that you've wanted yet and the last shift the one that nobody thinks of the one that that strong-willed determined bright women who are often really independent think of last is going to the source of the expert of someone who has a track record of solving that problem. And this is where people find their way into this group. This is where this live stream comes from, is a long body of work in helping moms eliminate the causes of overwhelm at the source. And do you know who the source is? It is not a partner, a, a teenage child or a two-year-old. The source lives within us, the source of overwhelm. That is our inner world. 
that is our programming, that is our survival mechanisms from early life trauma, that is the relationship lens our parents gave us that we're looking through thinking, why isn't this working for me? So there are a lot of things that you can't see that are inevitably creating a lot of suffering for you. And I can say that with, with quite a bit of certainty if you're feeling suffering right now. There are things you can't see. There's some you can see and can't change. There's both. Some you can see, you can identify, you can go, oh, this is, this is a problem and I know it. And, and, um, and I even, maybe I know where it comes from or I have the history because I've been to therapy and done that work, but I still haven't been able to shift it. I'm still not free of that. So I still feel shackled by that. Then the step you probably have not tried is opening to receive at a bigger level the learning that you need to resolve this problem once and for all. And we're human, so we can guarantee that there will be challenges after any kind of transformation we have. Life is gonna have challenges, the kid's gonna have a meltdown, someone's gonna get sick, you know, whatever, like you're gonna have a, you're gonna wake up on the wrong side of the bed. The solution is knowing what to do with that so that you don't get stuck in it. So to quickly navigate through the feelings, the challenges, the thoughts, so that you can live free of that limiting programming, so you can live free of that part of you that feels uncertain, that doesn't know that she knows, the part of you that doubts that she really can lead her family, that questions or analyzes or replays situations at 3 a.m. could have done that differently. She was from a time in your life before children. You get to decide if you want to bring her with you or not. You get to decide how much overwhelm you're willing to tolerate. You get to choose how much you're willing to deplete yourself or feel beat down by the way that your life is set up. If we don't like what we've got, it's okay. It's, a, it's just feedback that the way I've set it up did not give me the result I wanted. Whether that's your marriage, whether that's how you set boundaries or don't, whether that's the fact that you do all the laundry and dishes in your house and no one else even thinks about it, it's okay if you don't like that, but just know that's the way you set it up. At some point you agreed to those things. How mad does that make you, right? So mad, but instead of doing what you've been doing, which is beating yourself up or setting it up in a way that isn't working or blaming someone else for the fact that you agreed to this or they suggested it and you said yes and now it's their fault, Instead of staying in those agreements, instead of trying to just go down a spiral of guilt about it, regret about it, uh, anger toward yourself about it, you can decide to change it. You can decide to learn a new way. And I'm not certain if I can help you until I find out what's going on in you, in your family, in your life. I'm not certain but I can promise you that if you reach out for a consultation, that you've watched this live stream, you're prepared, you're ready to move forward, you're ready to consult about like, where am I stuck? And we can really pin that down on a call. Then what I can promise you is that if we find out that I can help you and I make you an offer to come and work with me and resolve the overwhelm at the level of root cause, that you can be free of this dynamic. Often the thing that has held people back the most is believing that they aren't trying hard enough. And if, if they would just try harder, they should be able to figure it out on their own or with what they know up until now. And it's just such a limiting thought. People will divorce 
before, and when I say divorce, I mean like split the household, go back to work full time, take on a second mortgage. Like people will take that step before they will go like, I am going to resolve the source of stress inside of me and I'm going to create a future of steady, stable presence and calm. And in Awakened Motherhood, I've been doing this a long time, this is a very proven system. And, and here's the thing. Most people do not have a roadmap for resolving overwhelm. Most practitioners, most coaches, most therapists, mo most, most people who are, are helpers and healers are solving a piece of the problem, but they're not solving the whole problem of emotional health and relationships. And that's what, what we do. That's what I do with my clients. So um, just to give you a little bit of a glimpse into this, like, Old thinking for this shift today, old thinking is I should be able to do this on my own. I should be able to figure this out. And what I'm offering you today, that is a, it, that is the shift every single woman I know, hundreds and hundreds of women who've been through Awakened Motherhood, had to make to show up on my calendar, to have the results of feeling like they can have dance parties with their kids any day, every day, and enjoy life, and, and really um, gain, gain a lot from motherhood instead of just giving so much. The step every single one of them t took was this step. They opened to receiving help. They opened to expertise they did not have. And I make the joke with people who get really tripped up on this, like, would you go and perform heart surgery tomorrow without the training and how to perform heart surgery? We would never think of that. And yet we feel like we need to be able to diagnose, resolve our own trauma, generational trauma, and uh, and be like super mom parents so that we can uh, have a, a beautifully peaceful home. And it just doesn't happen that way. We've got all of our own junk. And then our kids reflect all of our junk back to us. So what we do in Awakened Motherhood is eliminate that clutter, that backup of emotions. We eliminate that hard wiring and programming that is creating the chaos. And again, the only way to, to know whether... I can help you for sure whether we can help you to have that transformation and to, is to assess the fit. And so what I'm offering everyone who's been a part of this live stream this week is a special invitation to book a consultation with me specifically about what came up for you in this live stream to diagnose what, the, what has that brought to the surface and then to go a little bit deeper into if we took that and stretched it into, what does it look like if we were to really solve the problem of overwhelm for you to tap into what your heart wants? And we didn't have enough time in this live stream to get to that. So I'm gonna leave that for the calls, follow-up calls. Um, what I'm gonna do for you guys is open up my calendar. I never do this more than just a few days at a time. I'm a mom with my own kids and I'm a very, very protected about my time. And I'm gonna open up my calendar a little bit farther into next week. For you guys so that you have some options and you can find a time that works for you take the step if you are here and you have thought all the things i've named and you're still sitting back and going like what Mar marissa who gave a beautiful interview in this group if you haven't watched the interview with marissa just watch you know kind of sitting back kind of just tolerating what was going on kind of just watching herself sink if you've been doing that, how much longer are you willing to wait? How much longer are you willing to, to do the damage and then worry that it's too far, that it's, it's gone too far, it's too shameful to like look at the problem and name it. And like, it's just all crap. That's all limiting thinking from overwhelm. No one here is judging you. No one here is going to say, well, you really screwed up. That's never gonna happen. What's gonna happen is you're gonna tap into some expertise of mine and we're gonna go, okay, without any judgment, without any judgment. Here's what's going on. What's the problem causing you? Okay, well, what do you want to change? And then we're gonna assess if I can help you. It's a pretty painless process. So, and then if so, I may invite you in to work with me. So um, again, assessment comes first. Take everything you've learned this week. Go back through your notes. Go back through the, the replays. And let's check out and see where you land. And you might land in like, wow, the missing piece for me was just accepting that this is not what I want. And you need to sit in that for a while. Cool. Awesome. You may have gotten enough with that very first day one, shifting from looking at circumstance to, wow, it's in me. Awesome. If you've made it through those shift and been like, yep, check, 
check, check. Okay, now we're to the last one. There's nothing more for you to do other than wait and drown in overwhelm, survivor mode, beating yourself up about it, making it wrong, or take a new action. Get on my calendar. Let's have a conversation to see where you are, where you're stuck, and if I can help you. And either way, you're gonna get so much value from this conversation. It's a beautiful opportunity for you to up-level into um, seeing what you want and being like, yes, that is it. Okay, so I'm gonna open up my calendar for you. I'm gonna drop the link around this video. Um, I really wanna hear from you. What have you learned? What is the biggest takeaway from this week of live stream? I love you guys so much and I'm here to really serve and really, um, really help you to step up into a new reality, a better reality, a stronger faith, a, um, a living your truth, fully expressing who you are first to yourself and then in your family, whether that means no more balled up dirty socks on the floor. And I'm kind of not even joking about that. Or whether that looks like um, you get 50% of your time and energy back from doing things you really didn't even want to be doing anyway, but you didn't know how to change the family dynamic. Because when we change and transform a mom, her family changes and transforms secondly. So firstly, it's you. Secondarily, it's them. Because they are going to reflect to you who you are being. So that's the beauty of this work. It's super efficient. It's easy. Husband doesn't have to come along for the ride. He doesn't even have to know. He doesn't even have to buy in. Like, this is really easy. We're doing the work with you. You feel amazing. And then your family shifts and changes around that. How cool is that, right? So you are a beautiful, powerful, divine, sovereign being. I am sending you lots and lots of love today and so grateful to have been able to be here with you all week. Do not wait to book your call. It's the last thing I'll say. Don't wait. Life goes on. You get more of the same if you don't create a change. So let's find out what comes next for you. All right. Lots of love you guys and see you soon.